Hey everyone, Frankenstein here and today I wanted to do a little bit of a Soundwave wrap up. Um, for those of you who don't know, Soundwave is an alternative and I use that loosely because it's mostly kind of rock and metal and all those kind of genres, um, you know, subgenres and such. Um, it's a festival uh, here in Australia, a music festival and this year um, it went for two days um, and I just thought I would do a quick wrap up seeming as my um, my other Soundwave video um, which was kind of like you know preparing for a music festival the how to's and what to do's and that video did really well so I thought I'd do a wrap up and let you guys know how I myself went and um, you know things that I liked and things that I didn't like so if you're interested, please keep watching. Um, so I attended Soundwave Fest in Melbourne and as I mentioned, um, it went for two days instead of the regular one day. Um, at first I thought it was going to be a really good idea because it would minimize clashes and, um, you know, you kind of wouldn't be running around so much. It wouldn't be, you know, kind of like a mad dash to get from one stage to the other. Um, how wrong I was. <laughs> um, as it was, or as it were, um, I actually had quite a few clashes um, on the second day. And for Melbourne, the second day, the headliners were um, Lamb of God and Faith No More. Um, well, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, I... I really, really enjoy the two-day format, um, but for someone who has an ankle injury, um, two days really kind of takes it out of you, and so I, I really kind of struggled by the end of day two. Um, I, you know, we saw Lamb of God. I went with my boyfriend and my, um, my cousin. And Lamb of God was the final band we saw in day two. And I just kind of went, you know what? <laughs> you go and watch, go stand up and watch. I'm just going to go sit down <laughs> and chill out because I can't walk anymore. Um, but that aside, um, the two day festival I did, I enjoyed it. Um, it was hot as balls, like, oh my God. And the thing that I, okay, so on the second day, they had this like sprinkler system and you could stand under it and you get all wet and you're nice and refreshed. And day two from Melbourne wasn't as hot as day one. Day one was ridiculously hot. And um, it got to the point that, and I laugh now, it wasn't funny at the time, but I got so hot that it got to the point where I'm like, I need to go stand in the shade for a minute. And my boyfriend was just dumping bottles of water over me because I was on fire. I, it feels like it was mini heat stroke. You know, it was crazy. Um, but now I've lost my train of thought. I don't even know what I was talking about. Anyway, so they had the, the sprinkler system and it was very, very hot over the two days. Day one being hotter than day two. Um, because I lost my train of thought, I'm just going to press on. And <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know what I was talking about. Um... So, uh, the only thing I would complain about is that the sprinkler system should have been employed on day one, not just day two. Um, but I mean, that's a minor detail and aside from the mini heat stroke, you know, I managed to cool down and, and we were good. Um, I really liked the idea of a non, a non-paper wristband for those who were doing the two days. Um, and yeah, okay you got to love the ignorance of some people. If you read the wristband, which I'm sure most people would do, because, you know, once they put it on you and you kind of adjust it, tighten it or whatever, it says on the wristband, do not remove. And um, that pretty much if you take it off, then it's kind of void. So you know, you can't, don't take it off is pretty much the gist of the whole thing. If you're attending both days, do not take it off. If you need to shower, it will be fine. It's not going to like, you know, get all gross and whatever. It's made to withstand. 
Um, and people were actually saying, oh, I took my wristband off, so how am I going to get into the festival now? And Or I threw it away, and I'm just like, are you people fucking stupid? And how? Like, you know, people at the gate that were putting the wristbands on you said, please, do not remove this. This is your ticket. And all these people are like, I didn't know it was my ticket. I mean, come on now, y'all. Shit, how dumb do you have to be? But anyway, I... <laughs> personally liked it. I thought it was really good, um, you know, to not have just a shitty paper wristband. Um, all the technicalness aside, um, I thoroughly enjoyed this sound wave. Um, my day one kind of wasn't that busy. Um, for most of the day, we kind of had to just fill in bands and things. And I'll tell you who I saw. And as you can see, I will be looking down because I am referring to my phone. This is probably one of the greatest things ever invented. It's the Soundwave app. Um, this comes in handy so, so much. You don't have to rely on, um, you know, printing out a timetable or, or having maps or anything because it's all on here. Um, and it also comes with a really cool um, My Planner function. So pretty much what you do is you go through all the days um and which well you know you go through both days and you choose um which bands you want to see and it goes into your planner and then what happens is on the day you get sent um like little reminders of what time each band starts and what stage they're on and it's really it's really just a cool little thing um you know if you don't want to carry a lot of stuff around um, you can just refer to your phone and all your info is on there. So, um, my first day consisted of these bands. I saw, I saw King 810, um, and I didn't like them. I guess it's just not a me thing. I'm kind of, you know, I'm not really into that kind of style of music, but, um, they had a fairly decent crowd, and which is kind of awesome, especially since they were, you know, opening uh, stage four. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, I saw Apocalyptica. Um, I, I didn't like their singer, um, but I enjoyed the performance that they put on. So, I know it's a little bit, you know, you, I don't know how you can enjoy one without the other, but... That's just how it is. Um, I was kind of hoping, because Apocalyptica were on the same day as Slipknot, and I was kind of hoping that um, Corey Taylor would come out and sing the song that he did with Apocalyptica, but he didn't, but that's okay. Um, we saw Killer Be Killed. Um, they're a super group, and they were awesome. They're actually really, really good. It wasn't... They did, like, they didn't sound like how I expected them to sound. I think I expected them to sound a little bit, um, I don't know, not kind of hardcore, but I don't know. I expected them to be really, like, brutally heavy. And they were heavy, but without the brutal, you know, I don't know. It's really weird. I can't explain it, but they're actually very, very good, and I really enjoyed seeing them. Um... Godsmack, um, I, so I knew of Godsmack, but I had never actually listened to a whole lot of them, um, and my boyfriend was like, it's one band that he had to see because he hadn't seen them live, and I'm like, all right, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll check them out, and I had heard, um, one of their songs, might have been the song of the Scorpion King soundtrack, um, I Stand Alone, I think it's that song. So I kind of, you know, like, I kind of knew of them, but weren't completely familiar with all their stuff. Holy shit, like, oh, I don't want to sound like a fangirl, but Sully is the man. Ah, uh, they sounded amazing, and, excuse me, the thing is with Godsmack as well, during their set, um... There was a power outage and it was crazy like it must have affected quite a bit of the showgrounds if not all the showgrounds because um godsmack were on stage four um and the sound had gone out for 
a couple of minutes but there were rides not too far away from the stage and they had shut down as well so um you know there's one ride that kind of um um swings people like right up into the sky and back down and so they were stuck right in the middle of the air and it was pretty crazy but um they were so professional about it they didn't crack the shits or anything they just kind of you know waited it out and then just kept playing like nothing had happened and um they were so good. I'm, I, I think I would call myself a fan of theirs now because they put on such a great show and I'm kind of sad that I didn't get to go to their uh, side wave because I just, I really would have liked to see them again. Um, they just, I, I was really quite taken with them. So they were super cool. Um, the next band I saw, <laughs> okay, so I'm, um, we were we were going to see Mayhem, but we didn't. Um, and that was because my younger cousin... So my younger cousin, he kind of... This is his first sound wave, so we were popping his sound wave, Terry. Um, and, of course, with Butcher Babies <laughs> being on the bill, um, they were doing a signing, and I'm like, you should go and meet them because clearly, you know, they're hot. <laughs> and... Um, and, you know, go have your photo taken with them and, you know, make all the kids at school jelly or whatever. <laughs> and, you know, I like their music, but, um, so he went in, um, and did that. He went and met the Butcher Babies and we missed out on Mayhem, but we caught, like, a little bit of the end of Marilyn Manson set. Now, after 2012, I said I would never, ever watch him again. And it's been really interesting because I've spoken to a lot of people who did watch Manson um, at Soundwave and the very interesting thing to me is that when I speak to people who saw his performance, both fans and non-fans, it seemed to be the general consensus that the guys were more inclined to complain about how terrible his set were, whereas the females were uh, praising him more, which I found really interesting. Um, as for myself, I mean, I can't speak about anyone else, but as for myself, I, after 2012, I said I would never watch him again because I thought in 2012 he was shit. This is just my opinion. Please don't be mad, each to their own. But I just thought he did not put on a very good performance. Um, however, after my cousin got and met the uh, the Butcher Babies and we went to the main stage um, because I was waiting for Slash to come on. Um, we did catch the end of Manson's set and I feel really conflicted because there are some songs I really, really love of his but I just can't get past the fact that I think he didn't put on a good show. And people are saying, oh, he redeemed himself and he was much better than 2012. He was better than 2012. But in my opinion and my opinion alone, I just don't think he was good. And that's just me. And like I said, I like some of his songs. I, you know, I'm not... Um, I don't speak for anyone else but myself. Um, I just... I just didn't like it. I just thought he looked lackluster and like he struggled to get through songs and I don't know if that's how Manson... I'm, you know, I've never seen him perform any other time but both of these sound waves. Um, so I don't know if he's solo... Like, you know, his uh, headlining tours are much better or... Um, you know, I, I don't know if the way he acts on stage is just the way he always acts. But for me, uh, you know, I just... It wasn't for me. I I just didn't... I didn't like it. So, anyway, <laughs> moving on from Manson. Um, I was hanging out to see Slash because obviously he was down with Miles Kennedy and the conspirators and everyone knows that I adore Miles Kennedy. I think his voice is just heaven sent and I don't want to fangirl 
because fangirling is bleh, but I really, really love seeing them live. Um, and, you know, I don't think they disappoint, and Slash is still amazing, and, you know, aside from Slash, uh, Slash, <laughs> I can't talk today, aside from Slash and uh, Miles, obviously, who does the lead vocals, um, you have to commend the conspirators as well. Um, Todd Kearns gets to sing and I love it because he is amazing and um, he, okay, he sang Welcome to the Jungle and it was just, ah, oh, it was impeccable. Like, um, you know, he, he gives Axel a run for his money. I'm just saying it was, he was really good. And he also sings, um, Dr. Alibi, who on Slash's record, I believe it was Lemmy that sang it. Um, I haven't listened to it for a while, so, <laughs> but, um, they, um, they really, they really put on a great show. And I also did their side wave, which I'll talk about later, but, um, so Slash and co were phenomenal they were really great we wanted to see of mice and men and butcher babies but literally both of them clashed with everything so they either clashed with slash or they clashed with slipknot and there was no way i was missing slipknot <laughs> so slipknot were my last band of the night um this was the first time my boyfriend and my cousin were seeing slipknot so we we're popping their slipknot cherry um for me, uh, this was the one, two, three, fourth time I was seeing them. Um, I really adore Slipknot. They're just, ah, uh, so good. Um, um, I was really interested to see how they would, um, perform as a band. Obviously, they're missing Joey Jordison. I feel like I said that Joey Jordison. I don't know. It came off really weird. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um... Yeah, I was really interested to see how they would perform without him. Now, you know, it was a little bit of controversy with him leaving the band or being removed from the band. Um, but they put on a amazing show. They never seem to, um, you know, they seemed like they were just not slowing down. They were out there in full force and... Um, they sounded really good. Corey sounding really, really great. Um, they're entertaining. I don't want to just ramble on because I feel bad for people who don't ever get to see them, but they are so good. Um, they did. They put on a really good show. They brought out their whole um, stage setup, which was really cool. Um, and yeah, they were just... They were just awesome. They had a real big crowd. We were sitting in the grandstand um, so we could kind of get a really good view of them and it was it was just really, really awesome. I'm really sad that they didn't do a side wave like they did um, back in 2012, but they were awesome. Um, put on a great show and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So happy I could see them again. Um, and I got to hear Custa live, which is one of my favorite songs off the new album. It's just, it's awesome. So if you can, um, if you're a fan, do check them out. If you get the chance to see them live, make sure you do. Um, but yeah, so that was my day one. Um, and we, I left in, you know, feeling pretty good. I wasn't too sore and, um, you know, it, it was, it was a really good night. I was there till, um, till 10 when it finished. So that was really cool. Um, day two, I kind of woke up and I'm like, oh my God, I feel a little bit sore. <laughs> um, I'll go sit in the massage chair for a bit and kind of try to loosen up my back. My lower back was a bit sore, but, um, that was okay. We got there and day two for us was a much busier day. Um, and I'm just checking who we saw now. Our first band. I don't have it on here, but um, we watched Area 7. They're a Melbourne band. They're, um, you know, a bit ska. Um, and they put on, uh, and they had a really good following too. Like there was a, a really decent sized crowd. And I think that's really good for Australian music. Um, it's good to see 
Um, it's good to see people getting behind Aussie bands. Um, so that was kind of awesome. Um, who else did I see? I think after them, we saw the treatment. Um, I didn't know anything about them. I didn't, I, I had never heard of them up until Soundwave. Um, but I really, I enjoyed the bit of their set that I saw, a kind of heavy, heavy rock, I guess you'd call them. Um, uh, they're from the UK, I believe. And I really, I really enjoyed their set. I thought they were really cool. Um, and then we saw Death Stars. Um, that was so much fun. I really, I really enjoyed seeing them too. I'd never, no, I lied. I think I've heard like maybe one of their songs. Um, I had no idea what to expect, but I really, really, really enjoyed them. Um, my boyfriend, uh, you know, he liked a couple of their songs and stuff. So he wanted to check them out and I'm like, yeah, I'll go see anything. Any bands I don't know you want to see, I'll see. I don't care. So uh, we saw them and they were a lot of fun. Um, we saw Terry Universal, uh, another super group. Um, they were good. I, I don't know why I hesitated. I think I was thinking about what I felt about them. Um, I may have not paid quite enough attention as I should have, but, um, they all wear masks too. They, um, you know, they came out all in masks and creepy masks and, um, and yeah, they put on a pretty good show. And that, again, they had a fairly, um, a fairly big crowd as well. So, and that's pretty good for, I mean, they were on it, oh, they were on it like 2.40 in the afternoon, so... By then, most of the patrons are in, I would say. So they had a fairly decent crown. They were pretty cool. Uh, we saw Crown the Empire as well. My boyfriend really likes that band. And it turns out my cousin really liked uh, seeing that band too. So, um, and they put on a really good show. I had no idea about Crown the Empire except for that my boyfriend liked them. <laughs> I lead such a sheltered life sometimes, I don't know. Um, but they were, I actually really enjoyed them too. Um, yeah, so they were, they were really good. After that, we went and saw Steel Panther. Now, I think, <laughs> so my cousin uh, was only going to come for the one day. Uh, he's 16, mind you. So he was only going to come the first day to see Slipknot. And then I kind of told him about Steel Panther and I'm like, look... Steel Panther put on a really good show. Like, they're really... Uh, their songs are just so much fun. And they're really, you know, they're kind of dirty. And they interact with the crowd really well. And there's going to be lots of boobs. And as soon as I kind of mentioned boobs, he's like, I think I should get a second day ticket. So um, we, we went and saw Steel Panther. And, of course, they delivered. And they delivered much boob as well. I think my cousin was very happy. He probably saw more tits that day than he ever will in his entire life. So, <laughs> um, it was really good. I really, I love Steel Panther. They're just, oh, they're awesome. They're just, they're fun band. And it's funny because I know people who are just like, I don't get it. I don't get, they're gross and they're dirty. And I'm like, that's the best part about them. That's what makes them amazing. So, we saw Steel Panther and of course they do not fail to impress. They are just awesome. Um, we then went and saw Fear Factory. Um, I kind of sat this one out because I was getting a little bit sore. Um, so I sat this one out in the shade. Of course, I could still hear them. Um, my boyfriend went off to watch them and I think my cousin went for a bit and then he came back and kind of hung out with me. But, um, so that one was more for my boyfriend than for myself. So he enjoyed that. Um, we were going to see Ministry, um, and, uh, so, okay, I just, I love Ministry, and I love Uncle L, he's just so uh, crazy, and he's just so amazing, and, um, I really wanted to go and see them, but Atreyu were doing a signing, and I haven't seen Atreyu since 2008, and that was when I was in America, and I went to Project Revolution, which is, um, 
uh, like a mini festival that Lincoln Park put on and that was the first time I had ever like I was kind of introduced to a tray and um, when I found out they were coming to San Juan I was like oh my god I can't miss them but they were doing a signing as well um, in the signing tent so for those of you who um, don't know much about the signing tent um, they'll have kind of they'll have bands that are kind of low to mid card on the bill uh, in the tent signing and all you have to do is pay two dollars um, you can pay more if you wish um, all proceeds go to a charity um, and yeah so you just you pay two bucks and you get to meet the band so when I heard that a tray you were um, doing a signing I was like oh I just I have to I just have to so I had to miss out on a little bit of ministry or I had to actually I had to miss out on like most of ministry or all of ministry um, and we went and we met Atreyu and it was really really cool they're such cool dudes um, I bought an Atreyu t-shirt uh, from uh, when I was at Soundwave which I will insert here and um, yeah it was just it was awesome they're such cool dudes and uh, Porter McKnight was telling me that the design on the t-shirt um, was actually drawn up by an Australian artist which was really really cool I thought that was really cool and um and my boyfriend um, he had the curse um, on vinyl and so they were really kind of stoked to see that I don't think they had seen that version because the vinyl was actually red my dogs are going crazy I'm sorry if you can hear it um, but yeah they're they're really really cool dudes I loved seeing them again so that was that was really awesome um, so we went from the signing we kind of walked past where ministry was playing so at least I get I got to hear like three seconds worth of their stuff but three seconds is better than nothing and um you know I kind of saw the the backdrop to the stage and it was all like trippy acid goodness I don't know I don't know how to explain it um but so we went from there we went to see Incubus we caught like I think was the end half of Incubus um, and I really enjoyed it I love I really I like Incubus I like Brandon <laughs> um, but he still sounds amazing and I think I really like it when bands kind of sound how they sound on the record you know um, they still sound really good and they put on a great show so seeing Incubus was really great um, we stayed for Soundgarden and okay I love Chris Cornell I really do I've seen Chris Cornell solo like four times or three times or something and every time he was amazing his voice is just so fabulous and you know he's he's he was really great every time I saw him solo the one time I see him with Soundgarden, and I'm not sure if this was because I was sitting on the grass at the time and there was kind of like a wall of people in front of me, but he, he just sounded really flat. He sounded like he didn't want to be there, like, oh, this, I'm just doing this because I have to be there. And I, for me, uh, you know, I just, I don't think that's kind of how he performs. So maybe the sound just didn't generate from back behind a wall of people but I was really disappointed with Soundgarden and it was really really sad we ended up leaving like I don't know halfway through their set um so I, I was really bummed about that um but again I love seeing Chris Cornell so I guess you know you weigh the good with the bad but never mind after Soundgarden we went and watched a trailer and oh my god it was so good I just oh I love it I love it um they are awesome they played really really great songs you know they played songs from um you know their whole career it wasn't just kind of you know here and there. like it wasn't just newer stuff or because they've got a new album I don't know if it's out already or if it's coming I think it's already out but um 
yeah, it was really good. The set list was really good and oh, Brandon still sounds amazing and Alex sounds amazing and um, I, I really was so happy to see them. They were probably like my highlight for day two. Um, it was just, yeah, they were awesome. Go see a tree, they're awesome. Um, and then, of course, after a tree, we finished with Lamb of God. And by then, I was dead on my feet. Um, I went to sit down, and my boyfriend and my brother, am oh I not my brother? <laughs> my boyfriend and my cousin, um, they went to um, they went to watch it. They were standing to watch it, but you know, Randy. I mean, it's not like you cannot hear his voice. So, um, you know, Lamb of God was a great way to finish the night, and um, and yeah, they of course Lamb of God were amazing. I've seen Lamb of God before when they were touring with Metallica, but um, yeah, it was it was really really great. It was a great way to end the two days. So. Um, yeah, Soundwave was really amazing. Um, I hear that it may, or oh, it pretty much is the last time, um, that Adelaide, uh, will be getting the festival. So now it's, and it, uh, it's exclusively an East Coast festival, which, you know, it's a bummer because, I mean, it kind of it got cancelled in Perth and then, um, you know, now it's been cancelled in Adelaide because there wasn't enough ticket sales, but, you know, it's, it sucks. I mean, it sucks for them, but at the same time, yay, because now my friends from Adelaide have to fly to Melbourne. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, um, also I guess that AJ's kind of mentioned that he doesn't know whether it'll be a two-day festival again next year. Um, you know, I don't, I, like I said, I don't mind either way. I think, it, you know, they both kind of work for me. There's still clashes, <laughs> um, you know, and they're still running around from stage to stage. But I, I really, I really enjoyed the, um, the way the festival went this year. Um, you know, it was pretty much without a hitch, or at least for me it was. Um, but yeah, Soundwave was amazing. So I had a really good time and, you know, I'm really happy that I got to share the days with my boyfriend and my cousin, who I think, you know, we've managed to convert to the dark side. So he will be attending more Soundwaves with us, which is really, really awesome. Um, after Soundwave, I, a couple days after, I went uh, to the Steel Panther and Slash sideways I went with my boyfriend um and it was really it was actually really really nice because um the concert fell on our one year anniversary we've been together for one year which you know I know one year people are just like well whatever one year but you know it's really special it was really special to me so um that was really cool we got to spend it at a concert um and actually our first official date <laughs> was at uh, another side wave of the year uh, previously in t uh, 2014 um, and that was the Rob Zombie side wave with corn. So, you know, we're really lucky because our anniversaries tend to fall on side waves. So <laughs> I love it, I love it. But um, uh, yeah, the side wave was amazing. Um, Slash, uh, well, start with Steel Panther because they were the opening uh, band. They played for about an hour, maybe just a little bit over. Um, you know, still with Steel Panther. <laughs> so they were amazing, and um, you know, not as much boobs as at Soundwave, but you know, there were boobs. So. You know, if there are boobs, it's a good show. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, they were good. And then uh, Slash and Miles and the Conspirators came out and they played for about... Um, I think they played for, like, two hours. And it was crazy because, I mean, there was a lot of amazing songs in that set list, you know, and it's a really healthy mix of, like, um, Guns N' Roses songs and songs from Slash's, you know, solo stuff. And Miles is so fantastic, you know, with that amazing voice of his, he can kind of cover anything and he sounds amazing. Um, speaking of covering, they covered, as part of the encore, um, they covered Led Zeppelin's Immigrant Song, 
Oh, like uh, that was an ovary exploder right there because Miles can hit those really high notes and it just sounded amazing. Um, you know, I think they would have done Zeppelin proud, so. <laughs> um, but the one thing that I kind of, and this is going to sound really terrible because, you know, knowing that Slash is a guitar player, you would think when he did solos, you would just be like, oh, you know, I'm totes enjoying these. Um, but Slash did maybe three or four solos. And when I say solos, I'm talking about solos that went for like... 10 15 minutes I felt like they went forever and it's it's really cool on the one hand to like to see him just jamming with you know the band um you know with Todd and Frank it's just it's really cool to to watch them play and of course Brent on drums um but uh, you know at the same time I'm just like I feel like this is never ending and I get impatient and I don't know if it's just a me thing, um, you know, and like I say, as cool as it is to see Slash jam out for, you know, that long, it's kind of like, it, maybe it's a bit too long. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I love you Slash, I do, but <laughs> it's just like, I don't know, I just, for me personally, I think, uh, you know, three or four solos at like 10 to 15 minutes each, it's just, it's just that tad bit much but um I, it's not a complaint I know it sounds like a complaint but I the, you know that's just a me thing whatever I just you know I, I love music so whatever <laughs> I, I'll sit through it I'll I will pay attention and I will enjoy it but yeah I just think you know it was a bit much but other than that um you know like I said like I mentioned with uh with their performance at at Soundwave it was awesome so I can't complain I get to see Miles Kennedy and you know it's a good night it was really good so I really enjoyed it and um I guess now I've got another year to wait till Soundwave 2016 rolls in but um but yeah if you guys if uh, if you went to Soundwave let me know who you saw and who you loved and who you hated and um, let me know how your day went because, you know, for each individual it's always a very personal experience and it's a very unique and different experience. So I would love to hear what you guys, how you guys went at Soundwave. Um, but yeah, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Um, you know, check out my other videos. I've got lots of crazy stuff on here. So, uh, but yeah, until next time, I'm Natty Frankenstein and I will see you later.